Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and in this video I want to show you the authoritative input uh, so we can make the server an authority and we can make the client just an input-based request. So uh, what we're going to do is if you have the package set up, go into Bearded Man Studios, uh, Forge Networking, Examples, and then authoritative, uh, authoritative and Client Prediction. So if you open up that scene there, You'll notice we have a networking manager, and if you look over here on the inspector and select the Forge Cube guy, this is the guy that's spawning. Notice that it has server is authority on and client side prediction is off. These are the settings we're going to have to do for this first demo so that we can see the difference between when the client side prediction is on and when it is off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the name of the scene, authoritative and client prediction. I'm going to go to the menu. And inside of the canvas scene name, I'm going to paste it so that that's the scene that's going to load. Now I'm going to go to my build settings. I'm going to add the current. I need the menu. And I'm also going to add the authoritative uh, and client side prediction. So now that we have those two, I'm going to build and run. Oh, wait. Before I build and run, we're not going to see a difference on my local machine because it's uh, calling too fast. So I'm actually going to make a, uh, I'm going to up the network latency simulator and I will have another video about packet drop simulation and network latency simulation but for now let's put it at 500 milliseconds so that there's a delay between the client and the server of 500 milliseconds which is pretty dramatic so we're gonna have it here and now we're going to build and run okay so I'm going to make uh, this instance the client and the editor the server so that we can see both windows and we can see the delay so I'm gonna press play in the editor Get rid of this window. I'm going to host a server. There's our server guy. And uh, we can move him as, as normal. We get a bunch of messages spamming here. We'll talk about the messages later. I'll turn that off. And now let's go to the client and press play. And instead of here, we're going to join server with IP. There's our client. Now notice how delayed this is versus the server. I'm going to press an arrow key down. And I'm going to press it down now. So notice how long the delay was between when I pressed it and when it went. And that was a 500, second de uh, 500 millisecond delay uh, before it got processed because of our network latency simulation. Now we're going to add in client-side prediction and see uh, how much of a difference it makes. So I'm going to jump back over here to the authoritative and client-side prediction. Inside of prefabs, this is the cube that we are looking at. I'm going to turn on client-side prediction. And I'm going to look at the canvas, make sure that we still have a 500 millisecond delay. And now I'm going to build out again. So build and run. Do the same shebang. I'm going to make this the server over here. Let's close this window. The server. I'm going to make this the client. So join server with IP address. Now you'll notice the difference between when I have the client side prediction and when I don't. So I'm going to press the key. Notice that the client starts responding immediately. So the client's going to move. And notice it's going to snap back uh, to where the server says it's going to be. So basically, uh, the client side prediction is set up so that uh, it does forward prediction uh, and the server is still authoritative and saying where the position is. So uh, that's that portion for what those two buttons do. And we'll continue on uh, now with looking at the code real quick and seeing how the events are set up. So if we go into the Bearded Man Studios, Forge Networking, Examples, Authoritative uh, Input, and Scripts, um, I had it so that it would automatically snap back to where the server was uh, when the inputs were released just so that we can really see the delay. Uh, and we can we can see that it, the server is still the authority over the positioning. Uh, so if you, you know, normally on the client side you're not going to want to do that. You're going to want to make it so that when you release you'll stay in your position. But if you get too far out of sync with the server, which in this case it was obvious because of 500 se millisecond delay, uh, then it will automatically update. So let's look through this code here and see what's going on. So it's driving from a networked mono behavior. And I called this the authoritative controller. Uh, we have some basic logic. Speed is 5.0. Uh, and then we have a few. Uh, this is a register for every single event 
Obviously, you don't have to do all of the events. Uh, you just do the ones that you want. So we've set up the input down request, which is an event, an input request, and an input up request. Input down request is the moment you press a key down. Input request is, con is constantly fired as the key is pressed down. And input up request uh, is the request when you release the key to the server. Same thing for the mouse down, mouse request, and mouse up. If we get, scroll down, we can see that I set up these functions, mouse up, mouse. These are basically the callbacks up here. I just set them to log out stuff. The only one that I actually did differently was the input down, which was for the left and right arrow to actually move the cube. If we look inside of the update, the way that we actually request to the server, uh, the uh, input request, you'll see there's an input check right arrow, input check left arrow, and mouse check zero. So when you call these functions, it actually does not constantly check the server just because it's in the update. It really only checks the key press down, key press up, same thing for the mouse, and uh, does the rest of the simulation. So uh, one thing you will notice about the events is that the input events take in a key code which is the key that was pressed so that we can actually check against it inside of this event. And the mouse takes in an index. So we have a button index, which is the mouse button that was pressed. There is an int frame, and we're going to have a completely separate tutorial on what that is and how we can do frame-based updates from the server. Uh, this is still experimental. Uh, we don't want to kind of go into that right now just because of it. It really deserves its own video. So uh, that's how we can set up the inputs requests. So if you're really curious, of course, Forge Networking comes with full source code. So you can always click on this uh, right here, and then you can jump to the definition. So you can go to definition here with, or press the hotkey F12. So check out the code. Let me know if you have any questions. This is basically how you can do authoritative input with client-side prediction. Um, so please let us know if you have any questions or concerns. Uh, please let us know if we didn't cover something and you need more information. And if you have any suggestions on how to make this better or improve it, we'll accept those too. Uh, as you've noticed, we do update quite frequently based on uh, people's requests. So until next time, thank you for watching.